Welcome back to Grandmaster Birthdays and a happy birthday to Paul Karish from, well, Estonia, but also the Soviet Union. Now, nobody really asked him back then, oh, well, what, what, what do you want to represent? They kind of forced him to do a lot of things, and we're going to cover every single dubious aspect of his uh, chess career in, in a series because I just uh, watched the documentary and I read uh, a, a lot of articles about him and I just fell in love with his story and I think you're gonna like it so I'm gonna do like a weekly series just like the World Chess Championship series and you know it's gonna be uh, videos covering uh, basically throughout the years what has he done now there have been a lot of dubious instances in his career but we're gonna see and uh, you know Karish is widely regarded as one of the best players to never win a world uh, chess championship title now um, world chess champion title yeah he never won the world chess championship and uh, that's because he never got to play the match against Alekhin because of the war that broke out World War Two, and um, yeah, sadly Alekhin died right after the war. So, you know, they had to play a tournament to see who would be the next world champion. And uh, you know, some say that he was forced to uh, give Botvinnik some wins. But uh, yeah, I mean that's that's some other stuff for other videos. So um, until then, I'm just gonna show you two nice games. This game uh, right here, Karish has the white pieces and he's playing against Alekhin uh, with the white pieces. Karish was known for this um, uh, wild uh, openings and aggressive openings. Um, C4 is not, this is not the wild move, this has been played even at the uh, top uh, level because it basically stops um, stops B5 and it's just a really interesting move. Um, also, you know, stops the the usual plans of, of black and then, you know, you're gonna advance in the center anyways. So, Alekin decided to go for this Fianchetto style and uh, here really... Um, Karish had the chance to play a little bit positional, like uh, this and the D takes, uh, for example, pawn takes and now queen c2. And I think some other players that liked, you know, positional um, positions and positional games, they would have went for this line, but not Karish. Karish goes for bishop e3, keeping everything, um, you know, just keeping the tension and keeping all the possibilities alive. But eventually he decides to go for this, but now um, you're gonna see he has uh, some pressure. First of all, he takes away the castling, right? And now he has some pressure against this pawn. So you see, if, if this were to happen and uh, now knight takes, now you cannot really do this right now, as you know, after the, the whole trade you would lose this pawn. Um, but you always have this pressure lurking on this pawn, and I think Alekhin played the knight h5 just, uh, I mean, just to, to meet this, and uh, also uh, maybe to sneak into f4, which he does, and now uh, Karish finds a really nice trade here. So, um, the following position really sees white as being really active. I mean, the only thing that white has to watch out is this bishop. So that's why we have e5, kind of shutting down the diagonal. But this move would have been, you know, some sort of a mistake. Because this equalizes the game. Although Alekhin did not go for this variation, I think he did not go for this variation because of the fact that it's most probably a draw. For example, queen g5 now defending the bishop, also attacking this pawn. But this pawn is much, much too poisonous because this is actually checkmate in three. So, you know, Alekhin, I think, wanted to, to keep some um, some winning chances, did not want to go into that kind of position, and that's why he played g5. g5 sounds a little bit crazy, and it actually is. And, uh, you know, Karish goes right in with the queen, trying to find some checkmate. But, okay, checkmate is not yet available, so he's forced to settle down for just a better position. But to have a better position uh, on move uh, 16 against the world champion is a dream for everyone. So, uh, you know, we have another trade, and uh, here Karish goes back. Now he's uh, attacking from uh, a distance this pawn, but uh, there are some uh, moves that are possible here by Alekhin that would, you know, kind of give him... Uh, some sort of a chance. For example, rook d8 is one of them. 
but also a more interesting one is g4 and now after knight d4 well you would think that you want to take this pawn but if you take this pawn then you're actually lost because knight f5 and well there's this checkmate threat believe it or not that's actually checkmate so um you cannot really do that you have to go long castles and well there are a lot of complications here the uh, takes takes and now black has a really trash structure like check maybe the king moves and again i think alekin simply even though he might have evaluated this as potentially drawable i don't think he really wanted to draw especially against someone like Karish who was really young back then so the the world champion tried to preserve chances and um right you cannot take the knight because this uh, this would be checkmate and uh, he really got to an equal position in the end this position is actually equal but it's equal but that doesn't mean it's a draw and it's really shaky and now after Ale uh, after uh, carriage brings in the rook alekin just commits a huge mistake and plays queen before and in this position there's just a really nice tactic to win the game and after the next move Alekin uh, really resigned and you know you can feel free to find it maybe you can write it in the comments but the move is queen takes on d7 and Alekin just resigns after this because if you if you take the, the the queen then this is checkmate and if you don't take the queen well I mean what are you doing I mean this is checkmate anyways but you're losing everything and Alekin knew that he was not gonna beat somebody like Karish down 14 points of material and uh, Another short game that I'm, I want to show you. It's um, Paul Karish against uh, Yaroslav uh, Saitad um, And uh, this game features a Nidorf Sicilian so we all know the Nidorf now uh, There's this a4 line that I really like to play here um, but I never really got to play it with success in, in any tournament because I don't really play that. It's kind of risky and I only play a4 if I know my opponent is going to go for a Nidorf and I only played it once and that resulted in a draw. But uh, I mean, we're not going to we're not going to talk about me right now. It's about Karish. Uh, and we have just a normal development. Now, usually this uh, bishop, uh, both bishops uh, set up is uh, really aggressive, but of course Karish is not gonna <laughs> back uh, out uh, of that uh, But it's again a little bit, uh, you know, also shaky I mean, we have seen many results uh, end in Black's victory many results and in a draw many results and in white victory It all it all depends on the players, but now after Queen C7 That's what's fascinating about uh, this this game for me because I I actually play this line in the park when I want to go crazy I just take the pawn here and the, the thing is it's not actually bad it's actually good because you take and now the queen is attacked you have to move the queen and now you block this attack with knight d5 and you know it's crazy what um what is crazy about this is that if you take this just e takes on d5 and white is actually having a the time of his life here you have just an amazing position if you try to make way for castling you're losing this pawn and if you try to run with the king well you, you're just getting hunted out like if you try to go king g8 i mean you're not gonna survive this for long c3 just securing everything and just bring in the rooks and that's it so that's why um you know black decided to try to run out um right now and uh here right knight knight takes is the right continuation and you might be lucky enough to survive like b3 and uh here the best line is queen takes uh queen takes and now uh not not king takes but bishop takes uh and uh, maybe you somehow survive this I, I i don't know but the way that um yaroslav did it uh taking this knight mm, uh, just bishop back to c3 and now well look at all of the squares that are taken right now from black so um, you know just knight f6 bishop takes on f6 g takes on f6 knight to b6 and now just simply queen to c6 and just you take the rook i mean so simple right you, you fork you take the rook and that's it bishop e7 a4 and, and now, now you're even up material like you went from sacrificing material and now you're just up material and the conversion is just really nice here knight takes on b6 and um black resigns because if you take then queen f7 check and uh, then you're forced back here and um yeah well, you're just gonna lose the rook 
and um, on the other hand if you take with the queen now now you get checked again and uh, after bishop blocks you have uh, this uh, really nice rook swing rook b3 and you, you're threatening to, to go in and and if you try to run with the king then you're getting rook c3 checked and uh, you lose the queen so a really nice game by carriage both games and I'm, I'm just really hyped to to show you kind of like his whole story so i'll see you with the series probably next week i'm gonna start doing it i have to lay it out but if you're interested uh, hit the thumbs up and subscribe just to, to see to see the next uh, the next video so i'll see you on the next one happy birthday to carriage again Good.